welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, we are back in the shop. We'll be working on the ZR2 shortly. But before we go ahead and get into that, we're actually going to resolve one of the top 10 issues that I hate about my truck. And that is the handling department. And if you guys can see, we've got this huge box below us. And that is from a company named Helwig. They are one of the only people that make a rear sway bar for the back of a 2019 and newer Silverado. You guys might be wondering, well, why do you need a sway bar on the back of a pickup truck? Guys, this is kind of just going to be kind of one of a weird thing, but I added a Tahoe rear sway bar on the back of my GMT 800, my 2500 HG, and it made a heck of a difference on how that truck handled. You know, it got rid of a lot of the body sway, you know, anti-sway, sway bar is kind of what the point is. It got, it got rid of a lot of the body roll in that truck, and that truck had very bad cup holders, and if you turn just hard enough, your drink would fall out of the cup holder. Now I know drinks falling out of the cup holder shouldn't be a determining factor of why you want to add a sway bar to, to your truck. But honestly guys, I've had this truck for almost five months now, and the same thing that happened on the 2500 is happening on the 1500. You just drive around corners and you, you know, you kind of pitch it just not super hard, but just a little bit. And the whole truck sways, you know, you just feel it go. Shh. And then with it being this off-road ZR2 suspension, same thing. I don't know if it's amplified because it is the ZR2 suspension or not, but basically same thing. You change lanes and you feel that big body roll, you know, going to whatever direction you're going into. So trying to move to the right, you feel the body swerve to the right. If you're going to the left, you feel the body swerve to the left. So kind of the same thing happening in my 1500 as well as my 2500. Now the 2500, there was, there was no factory sway bar that was, actually there was, I forgot the name of the company that made it, but that was like a five or six hundred dollar sway bar. Well, <laughs> this 1500 series is no cheaper. Actually, it's a little bit more. Uh, these sway bars go for about 750 bucks. I bought mine on Black Friday. I got this in two days from CSP. They're a LS shop, LS LT shop up in Pennsylvania, but I think they drop shipped this from the manufacturer. Got it in two days, like I said. So pretty fast shipping, but they were $150 off. So I think I spent like 615, something like that. And, you know, with tax and whatnot. So just over 600 bucks for this rear sway bar. But unlike the 2500, this should be a bolt-in. Now, let me say this. My 2500, I love that sway bar because I had no money into it. I think I had less than $100 into it. But with that $100 cost, I had to do a lot of welding, a lot of painting, make try to make it a bolt-on affair. I had to drill into the frame. This sway bar kit, you don't have to drill anything. I believe it's just 100% bolt-on. But with the expense of this kit, I'm, I'm hoping it truly is a bolt-on. Now, that being said, guys, be careful if you are ordering this for a ZR2. The ZR2 is lifted in the back on lift blocks by two inches. I already knew that, but when I ordered it, I didn't look at the part number correctly. I actually ordered the wrong sway bar. So 10 minutes after I ordered it, I've found out that, oh crap, I ordered the wrong sway bar, so I had to buy another one. CSP is working with me. I had already shipped the wrong sway bar back because I got that yesterday. I, I had it for about 30 minutes. They gave me a return number. I sent, sent that back. So hopefully in a couple days I'll get a refund on that. So just be aware if you are ordering this for a ZR2, you need a specific number. And that specific number for a ZR2 is actually going to be Helwig part number 7844. That is for a two to four inch lift kit. This specifically says it right on the box, you know, uh, 2022 Silverado, you know, two to four inch lift kit. We're right in the middle there, right in a two inch lift kit, because that's what the ZR2s are lifted from the factory. So this, like I said, this should be bolt on. If you order the normal kit, I don't have the part number readily available. If you order that one, it, the end links will basically be too short. There might be other differences in the kit as well. So here is the sway bar kit all opened up. Uh, the hardware seems to be in pretty decent shape. Uh, the one thing I will say that's kind of disappointing is the end links. <laughs> the bottoms are already rusting. I don't know if they just didn't prep them when they painted it, how long it's been sitting there. I mean, these trucks are only two years old, so it shouldn't be sitting there that long. But anyway, long story short, so I'm gonna have to probably touch this up. You know, take, you know, I'm going to install it first, then come back and later and repaint it. But yeah, so probably going to have to scuff that up, get the rust off, and paint that. Everything else looks to be powder coated or painted pretty well. The sway bar itself looks in pretty good shape. Now, like I said, this should not be a drill application. You've got these square shaped bolts, those will go over the frame, that will tie into one of the mounts. And then the U-shaped bolts, those will go over your axle, and uh, that will be probably bolting into that. 
more than likely. Yeah, probably the big thick clamps on the bottom. So now if you're one of those guys that pony up for a ZR2 Bison, this may not fit because I know that there is a armor off-road package for the rear axle. I believe I could buy that and bolt it up to my truck, but with this sway bar, I don't know if that'll get in the way or not because there's basically, I don't know if it's aluminum, steel, whatever, stamped steel. There's basically a plate, like I said, that will bolt up to the bottom of the axle. Actually, I should look under my axle because we'll be working on that today and see if I've got those mounting plates. And if we do, we'll let you guys know. But if you guys, just FYI, if you guys have a Bison or the AT4X, whatever the GMC version of the Bison's gonna be, be aware, this probably won't fit with that armor. Just, just heads up, so. All right guys, we'll be installing this sway bar with the ends of the arm pointing upwards. So that will be going forward toward the front of the truck. And this little hoop will end up pretty much where the rear differential is. So just wanted to give you guys that heads up. And one thing I forgot to say, this sway bar is adjustable. I wasn't aware that it was. Basically, they tell you to start with the most outermost position. That's like the, I guess, softest. And then if you want firmer and firmest, move the sway bar in and that'll make it tighter. So the sway bar is adjustable to your liking. So like I said, we're going to start off with the outermost. But yeah, so I think this is just going to be four mounts. Get it up around the frame, get it up around the axle, attach the frame mounts with the end links to here. We'll attach the Axle mounts, I believe they're gonna go about here and here, something like that. All right guys, I actually ended up stopped doing the install because I had to get basically all the hardware and components lined up and organized because honestly, they just throw you a bag, nothing's labeled and uh, yeah. So basically I just kind of organized everything into how I thought it was gonna work out and yeah, that's basically what's gonna end up happening. So, so for each huge bolt, there is a regular nut and then there's a locking nut so got that organized got our end links organized i installed the larger jam nuts which didn't make sense at the time because you know they're the biggest ones in the pack well those go on the end links and then the sleeves there's these i don't i don't want to call them polyurethane but there's these a synthetic material bushing uh the bigger bushings are actually going to end up going in the top so the top end of the sleeve the smaller one's going to end up going in the bottom so if you look at the bushings, there are actually different sizes. So this one right here is bigger than the one that's next to it. So like I said, this big one will go here. And the way we're able to determine that is because I had to look at what went into the bottom of the square U-joint. So this clevis is what they were calling it. That ended up being this bigger bushing. So this bolt goes through here. This bushing will go in there. That bushing will go inside of this polyurethane piece and then that will go inside of the top part of the end link so all right guys so the difficult side on the square u-bolts is actually going to be the driver's side that's where we're at you guys can see we're kind of underneath the fuel tank and as you guys can see there's actually a set of brake lines running parallel to the frame you actually need to get underneath those and the trick to get that is take a long screwdriver if you guys could see that gray little plastic box press up on that that'll give you just enough room to fish the square u-bolt from the back over the frame underneath the brake lines and that'll get you under to where you need to mount the clevis joint for the lower part of the sway bar of the end link so yeah that's kind of the trick i was messing around with that and finally i pushed up on that gray box that gray plastic piece that like i said that gave me enough room to get the sway bar this mount over the frame all right, so we got the clevis joint. Basically, this is going to be the upper mount of the end link. Basically, put your washers behind the nut and then put your nuts on the square U-joint. And we're just going to have to tighten this down. And then we're going to have to grab the end link, put it in here, and then there's a piece of hardware that you bolt through there. So order of operations, tighten this down, go get the end link, then put these bolt through the end link, then tighten that down. So let's get this clevis joint tight, and we should be done on the driver's side for this upper mount. All right guys, the next step is basically we're gonna have to install the sway bar. So you guys can see I already got the bushings put on the sway bar. They are split in half, so just open them up the one end, close it, and make sure that the bushings are facing up because the U-shape will go up. And if you guys can see under the truck, that might be hard to see, but on the axle there, there are the U-bolt right there, and there's a U-bolt right there. 
And so yeah, we're basically ready to install the sway bar because how this works is this U-bolt goes around the sway bar bushing. Then these holes share the same holes that the axle tube mount uses. So you're basically gonna have to do this all in one shot. Line up the axle tube U-bolt, get the hardware through here, get the hardware through the sway bar. Then you'll be able to put the washer and nuts on the bottom of the U-bolt. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it. So, all right guys, yeah, you can see we've pretty much got the driver side of the sway bar mocked up. We're not fully installed yet, but we got the lower two mount installed. We got the lower sway bar bracket mounted to that two mount. And then you'll see we got a washer and a nut. Now the instructions say we will double nut this. So what that means is we will tighten this down then on the bottom, we'll put this locking nut underneath that. And that will prevent it from basically loosening up or, or sliding back down. So get that on and uh, yeah, we should be good to go. So, you know, the interesting thing over here on the passenger side, if you look at the paint, it's all scuffed up. I don't know if that happened during the manufacturing of the truck, maybe when they were lifting the axle to the frame and they were assembling it, but it almost looks like there was a sway bar installed back here. Now this being a ZR2, there never would have been a sway bar installed back here. Just kind of something funny that I noticed that there's a mark over here on the passenger. There's also a mark over on the driver's side as well. So, all right guys, we got the sway bar basically installed. Obviously the end links are not installed yet. The sway bar is moving all over the place because we haven't finalized anything, but now that we've got the basis of the sway bar installed on the axle, we need to swing everything up and uh, put the end links in. But before we need to do that, if you guys remember the clevis joints up in the frame, I need to start tightening those down too, because once I put the end link in there, I can't tighten those down anymore. And if you guys can see, I actually probably see it right there through the wheel. We got the end link installed. I've tightened the passenger side. I've not tightened the driver's side yet. But basically how I started tightening everything on the sway bar, I started on the lower mount on the end link, and then I moved to the lower mounts on the axle tube. So driver's side, passenger side. Then I moved over to the lower mount on the end, end link on the passenger side. Then I did the passenger side upper end link. And now we're finally gonna end on the driver's side upper end link. All right guys, I finished torquing down everything on the rear sway bar, the end links, are all tightened down on top and bottom. The sway bar mounts on the axle tube, those are tight. And the mounts on the frame, those are tight as well. It's actually been raining for the last 24 hours, so I haven't been able to go test drive the truck to its ultimate performance. But I will say this, just driving around in my neighborhood, driving around the stores, doing errands and stuff, the truck is definitely a lot more planted than it used to be. It doesn't nosedive as much as it used to when you hit the brakes. It doesn't squat as much as you used to when you hit the acceleration, you know, the gas pedal real hard. And it definitely is flatter in the corner. So I'd say overall it was definitely worth the expense of the Hellwig sway bar. And unlike my 2500, I didn't have to fabricate anything. Zero machining, zero welding. I didn't have to bust out the weld or the angle grinder or the uh, drill press or anything like that. Everything was a bolt on. You just had to use basic sockets and stuff like that. So every, oh, overall, I think the install took me about four or five hours, give or take. I did take a break in the middle of it. And, uh, but yeah, so I mean, it is kind of a long install, but honestly, it's well worth the time and the cost, like kind of like I was saying. And yeah, so the truck right now definitely feels way more planted than it used to. Now, two things to consider. Uh, I don't have the stock wheels and tires on there right now. I've got those, I'll call them kind of street tires on there. And uh, so right now I have a feeling I might get some of that motion back if I go back to a bigger tire. Right now I've got a 275.55 on there. I'll be going after 275.60 on there and the tires that are on there are very old. So, you know, there's not much tread left on them. And, you know, so that might, you know, you know, switching tire brands going to a little bit bigger tire that might, you know, impact kind of what I was feeling with just the swaying back and forth, side to side, front and back and whatnot. So just, be aware of that. So if you guys want to help reduce some of the off-road suspension pogo stick that the ZR2 suspension feel like, I would say go ahead and get this uh, rear sway bar. Now, some of you guys might be saying like, well, why would I want to do, why would I want to get rid of that? It's an off-road truck. Honestly, guys, probably 98% of us are not going to take these trucks off-road. 
So they're gonna live on the road, on the highway, on you know daily driving or whatever. So I think this just helps make it a much better daily driver. Plus, if you guys have a regular Silverado, this rear sway bar really will help out too. And like I said earlier, definitely on the 2500 chassis, if it helped out, it's definitely gonna help on the 1500 as well. So that's actually be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. If you guys wanna see more ZR2 updates, hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications. And if you guys wanna help support the channel, I'll try to drop a link down below to the Hellwig sway bar that we used. Remember, I think it was like 7784. And uh, we'll also drop you some links for the tools that we used. And also make sure you check out our website, bonecrusherss.com. Any contributions you guys make there, go right back to the Zero 2, the truck, the Corvette, the shop, etc. So that's going to be it. Thanks, guys. Have a great one. Yeah.